folks, let's do a bend back. Frog fly. Got all my stuff semi-organized here to the point I can't find anything. That's my typical MO. Alright, number one, Aberdeen hook. That's just what I'm using. It's a relatively long shank hook and it is uh, a thin wire hook. They're nice and sharp. First step, as always, is for me anyway, you don't have to do this if you don't want, is to flatten the barb. If you're gonna flatten the barb, make it the first step because quite often times these cheap hooks, they'll break. And that's a bad thing to have happen after you've tied a fly. All right, now this bend back is intended to run a hook up I want to take about half the distance, just a little less than half the distance, and bend it like this. That puts the body of the fly, it's going to be built on top of this hook so that everything goes over this part here. And that'll make it so that it sits in the water like this, hook up. It helps make it weedless without making it fishless. And with all flies the trick is always to make them hit it if they don't want to eat a frog that day well there's not a whole lot you can do about it all right make a little adjustment all right thread it up everything else in this is just like a whole lot of other frog flies you don't put much you don't build much of anything past this bend that you made in the hook Goes to about right there, maybe a little past. Come up here. Now, on these last few that I've built this way, I wanted the foam to extend past the eye of the hook, so I needed to tie in my tippet or leader. And I've been using 15 pound test. That stuff, 15 pound test. And you just put a loop through here, cut a little piece of it. You just need a little piece. Put both ends of it through the eye of the hook. Oh, I forgot one little minor detail. Need to bend the eye of the hook. Oh, I think we need to do it down like this. There. That way your monofilament will come straight out. Both of them through the eye of the hook. Spin it around so it's facing a good direction. Doesn't matter how long it is. I just want it to be long enough that it doesn't interfere with my tying of my fly. Bind it in good because you're going to put a lot of force on that. All right, there you go. Now, first step, bucktail. Bucktail, nice little puff of it. Tied in at the very end of your thread. On the very back, so walk your thread back. been cutting it right in front of the hook point just like that all right we're gonna level that out a little and we're gonna leave it good and puffy come back forward about halfway and grab your first set of legs I'm gonna use a couple of these green ones barred feather green ones Now we're going to tie in a hackle feather. Hmm, maybe I could put two of these in there just to give it a little more color. I think I will. I think I'm going to do something a little different with this fly. I'm going to take two of these and simply extend them back over the top. Strap it all down. 
Oh yeah, that's gonna look good. See that? That looks good. All right. Let's put in a hackle. I really need to go out in the barn and find a better hackle material. I need longer strands. Here's one that's fairly fuzzy. Okay, now what I do, what I'd like to do here lately is get a, a straw, just a drinking straw and cut a little piece like this to make a little collar. I'll cut it off later, but we're going to thread it up through here and put it back and that'll hold my collar down. See how that works? while I'm working with my foam. Alright, now we're going to start adding foam. Need a couple clean pieces, so I'm going to cut these two off. Oop. I'm going to need a piece, I'm just using yellow because I like yellow. And a frog fly because it takes color very well and the base of it is fine. Alright. We're going to extend this back, so what I want to do, I am probably going to end up cutting a whole lot of this back. Is the illusion gives it a body look at that that looks good there you go I don't know if that's I don't know if it's actually called a bend back or what but that's what the hook does there you go point of the hook is up there should be enough clearance here that the fish can actually get a hold of the hook if not I can always push it up more but surprisingly enough, it'll rest in the water just the way you want it. There you go.